So welcome to the Vote.je question time um, and this time we're talking with the St Helier Conatarp candidates. Unfortunately we only have one, there should be two two here, Simon Crocroft welcome to, um, to joining us. Unfortunately Mark Le Chevalier is unwell, he's lost his voice and so is unable to attend, attend this evening so we won't have him but I will be giving Simon lots of questions, I'm sure. So people at home, please get your questions in now. There is a Q&A box, which you will see on the Zoom webinar. Um, keep the questions fair. Uh, there should be questions that both candidates could answer and also obviously keep them clean. Uh, Simon will have one minute in which to answer each question and that will be timed and I will be strict on that as we have been all the way through this process. So. Questions in please now, and as I said before, unfortunately it is just Simon, Mark is unable to join us this evening. So Simon, I'm going to start first of all by saying, obviously, if if you were to get back in, if you were to be voted in, you, you've been you've been um, contarbed for a while now. Is What is there that's burning an issue in your mind that you would want to achieve in the next term? I think there are three. First of all, the environment, and I always place at the top of my list because St Helier residents are concerned about the environment, not only about their immediate environment, but about the global environment. And I think, you know, we are doing a lot to support that with our recycling, for example, uh, with our extension of our parks. Uh, they're concerned about transport. Um, we want to see some safe cycling routes in town. They still don't exist, safe walking routes. But we also want to see more shuttle parking so that people can get in and out of town uh, and use our shops. And, and thirdly, they want to see a continuation, I think, of sensible finances. We haven't put the rates up for eight years. I'm proposing that we keep the rates the same for nine years uh, in three weeks' time uh, at the Rates Assembly, subject to the ratepayers agreeing. Uh, so I think as long as we're prudent as a parish, uh, ratepayers will be happy with that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, we've got fears over the economy and cost of living coming up. And Sam Mezix um, just asked a question. He said one of the first propositions to be debated in the new state's assembly will be to raise the minimum wage to £10 an hour from 1st of October and to set the minimum wage to the living wage as soon as possible, which is obviously what reform is, is hoping to achieve. Will the candidates, or will yourself, obviously because we haven't got Mark here, will you commit to voting for that proposition? What's your thoughts on it? I don't think there's any argument against adopting the living wage. I think it makes a lot of sense. It reduces the need to provide that additional financial support to people who don't earn enough to live on. Um, but I think what we have to do is be aware of the demands on both the agriculture and the tourism industries. Uh, and I think they're going to need extra assistance because once the rates of pay go up for their staff and with all the other pressures on agriculture and tourism, particularly from the cost of accommodation uh, and wage inflation, uh, I think what the state is going to have to step in and support tourism and agriculture much better once the living wage is adopted. Okay, thank you. Um, and Penny's asked a question. She's um, talking, it's a, a good St Helier question here. She says, regarding your vision for extending Millennium Park, do you feel that most of the candidates in the three St Helier districts are supporting that project? Obviously, we don't know who's going to get in, but do you feel the candidates that, that are standing are going to support that? Well, judging by what happened in the Bridging Island Plan debate, the answer is probably no. And I was really disappointed uh, that um, the proposition was brought to the states to build a primary school on the Jersey gas site. And I accept we need a new primary school in St. Helier, but there are other sites that could be used for a primary school. But there is only one site that can be used to double the size of the town park, and that is the Jersey gas site. And Andy's vision, I think, is truly inspired, which is to have a much bigger park that will allow people to, you know, to really have that proper recreation and physical exercise that they're going to need. And with all the new homes that are coming into St Helier, I don't think there's any argument about doubling the size of the town park. And I, I, so if I'm re-elected, uh, I will certainly push for that. And I would hope that the new St Helier deputies would support it. OK, thank you. Um, Sarah Jordan's asked a question. Um, she said, what provision with the elderly disabled? So do you feel that the provisions within St Helier are catering for people with disabilities um, or who might have access issues, or do you feel that more should be done? Well, we can always do more, but I think the first thing I'd say is that I've been contacted by lots of people who visit St Helier, and they're really impressed by the fact that over the years we have dropped all the curbs, uh, and there's still many towns where you can't move around in a wheelchair 
or in a mobility scooter because you can't get up the curbs and every curb in St Helier is now dropped and if there is one that isn't dropped I'd like to know about it. Um, we also as a parish introduce a changing places toilet facility behind the town hall. It was one of the first in Jersey and that's not used by a lot of people but people know it's there uh, and I, I certainly would like to see more changing places toilets in, in the town area for people who need that kind of extra care when it comes to getting to the loop. Uh, in terms of driving, uh, there's clearly an issue about losing disabled spaces that was very much in people's minds over Broad Street. But I do think we need to expand the shop mobility scheme so that people can actually use shop mobility scooters when they come to town in all the car parks. And, and I have to talk about parking because that's one of the huge issues, particularly for businesses, for the retailers uh, in the centre of town. Are you happy that St Helia is providing enough car parking spaces? Are you happy with the transport system or do you think more should be done there? Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy with the provision of parking. Uh, talk to most people who live outside town and they will say that parking is a problem. It's why they don't come to St Helly more often. Uh, and we have tried to get the states to accept that we need to provide more shopper parking. Uh, we need to incentivise parking so that you might get the first hour free uh, in Pier Road, for example, uh, to encourage people to use that underused car park. But I actually think we need a new shopper's car park on the edge of town, possibly somewhere where the hotels are coming down around the Mayfair area. And that would really allow people to get into the shops and the restaurants uh, in West Centre. It's crazy that every evening at six o'clock, Minden Place car park is full, because it means if you're going to the Arts Centre or if you're going to a restaurant, you have to drive up the pier road before you can park. OK, thank you. And just a reminder, because people join us at home, um, get your questions in now. Um, this is the St Helier Contar. Unfortunately, we don't have the second candidate with us, Mark Richevalier, who is unwell and has lost his voice and so wasn't able to join us. But we do have Simon Crowcroft. Um, and I want to sort of talk a little bit about um, one of the burning issues which has been discussed in every single one of these events we've had and I'm sure it's pretty much in every single hustings across the island and that's housing. Ha are you happy with with what's happening with housing in St Helier? What would you like to do if you were elected to a new term? Well I'm happy in the sense that St Helier is is taking on uh, its responsibility to provide housing in town and, and that some people object to that they say that the other parishes should share the burden. I don't see housing as a problem or as a burden because people are the lifeblood of a town and the more people live in St Helier, the more interesting a place and the safer place it's going to be. But I do think we need to bring down the cost of housing uh, and we need to increase the amount of open space that people have got to access if they are living, for example, in a flat rather than a three bedroom house with a, with a garage and a garden. Uh, and, and there are lots of innovative ways that are being explored now to bring down the cost of housing. I've been talking to the Polish consul who's very interested in bringing in some technology that will allow us to build better homes more sustainably but also quicker and more cheaply than the current uh, old-fashioned techniques that we're still using uh, when we build homes. Okay thank you. Um, Jay's got a, a, a great question which I think is obviously coming from the heart. He said what happened to the camera annual beer festival um, and why did they claim that the cost of putting on the event was making it unfinancially viable? I believe it's on for this year. Um, great so news for you Jay. I, I think I think I mean it's a good question because I think the parish has got to get the balance right. Clearly there has to be some income from events because it costs us as a parish money to put them on, but, but that month, that cost shouldn't be prohibitive. And I've, I've reintroduced the first ever St. Patrick's Day Parade this March. We had a fantastic St. Patrick's Day Festival in Parade Gardens. And I want to see more festivals, more events, because that's good for local people, but it's also good to bring tourists into Jersey, into St. Helier, uh, to enjoy our festivals. Okay, thank you. Um, and we, we're talking again about accessibility because Trish has come back on the accessibility issue again. She says that from a disability point of view, even if you have parking on the outside of town, there's so much pedestrianised area that with those with physical disabilities can't get to the shops. Do you have an answer to this? I mean, it's a difficult one, isn't it? It is. Uh, you know, I've had long discussions with people who really miss the four spaces in Broad Street. And some people who've told me that they used to drive around St Helia for hours waiting for those four spaces to become available. Now, if you think about that, that's not really a sensible use of the motor car. Uh, and I would much rather, we, we have replaced the lost spaces in Broad Street, uh, in Gumaric Street, and, and clearly there has to be a priority of on-street parking for disabled people. 
And I suspect we need more spaces than we've got, and that's very much up to the minister, the next minister, minister of infrastructure, who controls that um, that, that proportion. Uh, but as I said earlier, I think we need shop mobility to expand. When you go into a UK town, every car park around the town will have shop mobility, uh, and you you go in in your car, you park for free, you get into a scooter, and you've got access to the whole town. And it seems to me that's a really good solution for a lot of people. Okay, thank you. Um, we were talking about housing there uh, earlier on, about, and you, you talked about buying houses, but of course uh, a lot of people rent. Um, Sam has also, uh, Sam Mezek again, has asked another question. He said that there's going to be another proposition which will arise early on in the new assembly, and that will be to appoint members to a re-established rent control tribunal. Will you support, uh, vote to support re-establishing that body? I think, I think the housing, well, the, the outgoing housing minister, uh, Deputy Lavi has already committed to a rent uh, control tribunal, so that to me is not controversial. Uh, I think it, it, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, the, some people object to intervention, and I, I think, I mean, I've spoken to some landlords who are concerned about the amount of time the state spends debating propositions to, to try to control how rented property works. And I know some people simply are not renting their properties anymore because of the onerous uh, red tape that, it's, that surrounds it. Uh, they, they regard themselves as responsible landlords that you know, shouldn't be made to jump through all these hoops in order to let their properties. Uh, so we have to get the balance right between controlling and, and regulating uh, the rental market but actually encouraging people to, to put their property into it. So we need to get that balance right. Okay, and, and one of the clearly one of the, the big issues for people going forward, and there's a lot of worry over this, is the cost of living. Do you see any kind of role for the parish in helping with that? I think I've already mentioned that the parish has frozen the rate for eight years. Uh, that's 23% inflation, and that's all of our staff, over 200 staff. Uh, we're paying them a quarter more, um, but we're still keeping the rate the same. So that, that requires quite a lot of juggling uh, and a lot of efficiency savings, but I think it works. And as I said, I'm planning to, if I'm re-elected, to propose freezing the rate for another, another year, which will make nine years in a row. I don't think we can do it forever. Uh, but I think it, it makes a difference to people, particularly you know, people who are finding it hard to purchase necess necessary things. Uh, if the parish can do other things, you know, we have a small team of, of helpers who, who look after the less well-off people who have fallen through the net of income support, for example, often come to us. Um, we've got various grants that we administer. So I think we can, as a parish, look after people well. Uh, and I think that's something we'll continue to do. I know one of the questions that's come up quite often in, in past events is whether or not candidates would support taking GST on food. What, what are your views on that? Well, I took the first uh, petition to the States many years ago to stop the introduction of GST. I still think it was a backward step. Um, it, it, it basically allowed the government to simply waste more money. It, it brings in about £106 million a year. Uh, and when you look at the state's accounts and you look at the, the, the waste of money, not just the golden handshakes, but, but all the huge consultancy fees that are paid for projects, uh, the research projects which simply sit on a shelf once the report is finished. And before we even talk about uh, moving around GST, uh, I would like to have a long, hard look at what the state spends money on, because I still think that in terms of tourism in particular, if Jersey didn't have a sales tax, it would be an incentive, as it used to be, for people to come here and spend money. Uh, the other point I'd make, of course, is if you take GST off food, it still leaves things like books and newspapers uh, charging GST. And it always sticks in the craw for me when I go into the local bookshop and I have to pay GST for a book. Yeah, OK, thank you. Um, and again, um, just to remind you, get your questions in to Simon Crowcroft, who is one of the candidates for St. Helier. Unfortunately, Mark um, can't join us because he's poorly. Penny has asked a question, and again, this is something that's come up quite a lot um, uh, along the ways about the, the changes in the electoral system. She said, if you were elected, will you find it easy to work with three districts um, and 13 deputies? That's only two more deputies in the previous four district arrangement, but somehow she seems to feel the new designation of district seems a bit more divisive than the old system. Do you agree with, with her, or she said, is that just her imagination? Yeah, I don't think moving the, the borders around a little bit has, is going to make it any, any more, more difficult. I, I, when I was constable in the previous terms, I met the deputies every month. We have a meeting before the Rogues Committee meeting, and we try to deal with issues and share ideas. Uh, and I would imagine that will continue if I'm re-elected. The fact that we will have another three more deputies will actually take St Helier's 
seats in the states up to 14. We should have 16 if we're going to have a third of the population, we should have a third of the seats in, in any democracy. So we're still short of seats in St. Helier. Uh, and I think it's really important that St. Helier deputies work with the constable, whoever's elected, uh, to make sure that quality of life issues in St. Helier are supported. It has been disappointing for me in the past four years that some of the really important matters I've brought to the states, things about the, the Millennium, Millennium Town Park, for example, haven't been supported by all the deputies. And that leaves me somewhat out in the cold when I'm trying to fight for more green space, for example. Okay. And, the, and one of the, the, the big sort of issues that have been uh, cropping up on the doorsteps in the campaign has been the, the loss of the island-wide mandate, loss of senators. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I sympathise because I think um, on the one hand, it's important that every uh, voter has the same representation in St Helia uh, in the Parliament. But it's also important that every vote, every voter can vote for the same number of people. Um, that doesn't happen. The only way that can happen is if we have, uh, as Guernsey had uh, adopted, an island-wide mandate for all members of the states. It would lead to a long ballot paper, but it seems to have worked in our sister island. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there's a majority of members who've been running for election who have heard this message time and time again. There is still a problem with the constables. The constables bring unequal representation into the mix. Uh, I have 18,000 potential voters. The Constable of St Mary has 1,800. So when we vote in the Assembly on an important issue, the Constable of St Mary uh, and his per or her parishioners have 10 times more political weight than the Constable of St Helia, and that's wrong. Okay, thank you. So firing questions away at you here. Um, James has, has asked a question. He says we keep on it's going it's about parking again, I'm afraid, it's, which is the, clearly a very big issue um, in town. He says we keep on hearing that free parking should be offered for Saturday shoppers. What are your views on this and what is happening with Broad Street? Here's the burning question of Broad Street. Will it be permanently closed? He says he knows a lot of people who are missing it. Well, I think, first of all, free parking, it's something that we've asked successive ministers of infrastructure to implement. We have, a, we have an idea of free from three, so that from three o'clock, parking in the car parks would be free. Uh, and then people could park and they could shop and they could go on for a drink and on for a meal or a concert or a play. Uh, and that was turned down by the ministers who said, well, they'll only do it if St Helier pays the money they're going to lose. And that's clearly not going to work. Um, as far as Broad Street goes, the majority of traders in Broad Street want it to stay the way it is. There's no question in terms of the numbers. Uh, and, and some of the big players in Broad Street, like Les Savillon Development at the bottom, uh, they're really keen that their new residents will be able to enjoy a traffic calm street. Don't, don't forget, we still have the buses coming through. We still have deliveries up to 11 o'clock. So it's not fully closed. It's closed from 11 o'clock. And so what I'm hearing, particularly with the festivals we're running, uh, in Broad Street now is that people are beginning to come around to the idea of it. Okay, thank you. And you, you touched on sort of people coming out and going out in the evenings in St Helio. What are your feelings about the situation with the Opera House? Well, I, I've not really been involved in the Opera House discussions. Um, it, it's clearly a really sad for the island that we don't have a functioning Opera House. Um, you know, I can only hope that those involved in those discussions get it reopened as soon as possible because uh, it's a fantastic venue. Uh, I remember when it was refurbished and we closed Gloucester Street and we had a tremendous uh, reopening. Uh, uh, but of course, it's a very old building. Uh, it's got huge problems with water coming in the bottom of it and, and other structural issues. Um, I think perhaps if I'd been in the Council of Ministers in the last term of office, I would have banged the table and said, look, we're not closing the Opera House, let's find the money. Uh, but what they used instead was a fiscal stimulus package, which unfortunately became time limited. Uh, and so the money was no longer available. And I, I think that was a mistake by the previous government. OK, thank you. Um, we're almost up on time here. Um, Penny's asked another question. She said that e-scooters are very popular. Um, and it's easy to see why, she thinks, because parks and open spaces are obviously going to be attracted to the use of them. She said there's no rules and regulations about their use, except that they're only permitted to be used on private roads, which is quite often ignored, she believes, and impossible to police. Um, is that on your agenda to pursue? Is that something you want to bring up with the relevant authorities? Well, we're tr still trying to get the relevant authorities to look at cycling. We're trying to get infrastructure to bring forward a cycling strategy with safe routes for cyclists. So asking them about scooters, um, so we certainly asked them about it. We, we're not sort of um, 
expecting to get a reply. Um, what I have heard recently is that EV, the local um, electric car supplier and electric bike supplier, are quite keen to run a trial with uh, electric scooters. And that's something that I'd be really interested to see because I think a trial would enable us to see what the, you know, what the issues are around scooters, where they can be used safely and where they can't. The really important thing when it comes to two-wheel transport, whether it's a bike or a scooter, is that pedestrians must come first. And it really pains me to see cyclists riding without any respect for pedestrians through St. Helier. It's vital that if you're on two wheels, particularly if you're going fast, that you give way to every pedestrian that you see. Okay, and we're, we're pretty much on time. I'm just going to ask you one final question, um, which again is going back to that lovely issue of parking. Sarah's asked, what is your opinion on potentially proposed increased residential development in St. Helier without parking? I'm absolutely opposed to it. Um, I believe that St Helier residents have as much right to car ownership as people living in the other parishes. And I think it's completely unfair that the planning department has been bringing in, uh, dropping the standards uh, constantly so that now developers don't have to provide a parking space per unit of accommodation. Uh, and I think St Helier residents almost have a greater right to car ownership than people living outside because we're the ones who are living in a busy town and we're the ones who, if we choose to own a car, want the ability to, to keep that car and to drive out of town to enjoy the rest of the island that you could argue we're keeping unspoiled because we're taking the accommodation into St Helier. Uh, we also need to get off the island. We need to go to France. We need to go to the UK. Why should St Helier uh, residents have the same rights to car ownership as everyone else? Okay, thank you very much. And we've, we've uh, you. asked you lots of questions. Um, that's uh, St. Helia Conotarb uh, candidate Simon Crowcroft. As I've mentioned at the start, unfortunately, Mark the Chevalier couldn't join us because he's lost his voice and is feeling poorly. But um, the election is coming up very soon. You're going to be able to have your say in, in a week's time. Pre polling is open if you want to go to pre polling, you might not be on Ireland. That's in the St. Paul's Centre in town. And of course, you can find um, all the information on vote.je. Thank you very much, Simon, thank for you. joining us. And thank you, everybody at home, for your questions.